happy to have here the chairs, Michael Grail and Rocky Gildrote of the uh, task force. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I got to ask you how are you doing during this very interesting time in our community, province, and the whole world, for that matter. Um, I'll start this one and you can go to the next one. How's that? So from a professional perspective, um, as I'd mentioned uh, before the interview, um, I left the IT world a little while back and I've been focusing primarily on the real estate and construction side. Uh, from a Remax Chad and Ken perspective, um, oddly enough, there's been a little bit of strength uh, over the over the COVID period. But um, as always, it trails as as the market does. So the anticipation is it should it should slow down in June somewhere. So so that's been kind of the the thing we've seen there as far as the construction side. Um, had an oddity there. Uh, we were on the essential list, then we were off the essential list. So that kind of made for a bit of a bizarre yo-yoing moment. And I guess. Uh, presented some of the, the desire to participate in what became the task force, because obviously uh, we've got to figure this out. Yeah, and Eric, I think with myself, I'm, uh, my livelihood is in the food industry. I'm a franchisee for Tim Hortons, and the QSR industry as a whole was never built. The bricks and mortar was never built for something like this pandemic. And so the challenges that it's po posed and, and shown us has been uh, not insurmountable, but it's been a tremendous amount of work to figure it out. And so, you know, we're still, we're using innovation. We're, uh, we're trying to be creative every day to offer uh, proper social distancing, uh, keep our guests and our staff safe. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we're, we're in business and, and we have to be profitable. And so uh, business is down right now and we have to find a way to claw that back. So we're hoping that uh, with this recovery and people getting a little bit more confident to come out, that they can pick up on their routines a little more and, uh, and, and we can get back into some sense of normalcy. But I'm mostly concerned with uh, the restaurant industry, with uh, event catering halls, uh, lodging, arts and culture, tourism, those sectors have been absolutely devastated. And I mean, to this day, most of them remain closed because of the government guidelines. So we have a tremendous challenge in front of us and uh, we just have to go day by day. We know it's not going away, so we have to find a way to live with it. Yeah, uh, you said it right there perfectly, what the mission statement is of the Mayor's Economic Task Force. Uh, there's a lot going on here and a lot that's about to approach us here in the next probably two to five years after uh, COVID's hit. Um, after your presentation and report to council, how are you feeling about Chatham Kent's ideas and contributions to help prepare CK rebuild for the better? Well, Rocky, I'll take this and then you can jump in. I think, uh, I, I think last night we were very pleased with the outcome. Uh, we saw that uh, the councillors uh, in, in the comments that we heard, uh, we saw that maybe maybe they're starting to think a little differently. Uh, what I will tell you about our report is there was nothing unique about our report. It, we simply went and, and looked at all the consultations and all the different reports that have been done in the past and shelved. That is growing a bunch of, uh, gathering a bunch of dust. And we simply brought those back onto the table and we simply ask the question, why? Why are we not looking at these things? And the one thing uh, in, in speaking with different people across uh, the municipality over the last six weeks, one thing became very apparent. We have a tremendous amount of assets in Chatham-Kent and we're not using them. And so we don't have to look outside of our community to thrive. We just need to get better in how we use the assets that we already have. We have an ag industry that's over $3 billion in revenue. We have a robust manufacturing in the in industry and we need to grow that. And we're trying, we're trying to look at it at how we parallel and, and, and sort of keep in trajectory with what the municipal targets are that council has already approved. And we know that three things are for certain. They've approved that they want an increase in population, they want jobs to increase, and they want their tax base to increase. And so we need to align with that, and, and our group is very much aligned with that, but how we get there may be a little off. 
And I think the one unique thing that the report did offer last night, and I hope it came very clear to the counselors especially, is that it's, ta it's a new world and it's time to rethink everything. Businesses have had to do it, especially essential businesses that have had to operate through this period. We have had to completely change everything that we do. Council is no different. And administration, they're, they're on board, they're willing to do that, but they have to take the, re the, the recommendation and the direction from council. So we really need council on board and we really need them to, uh, it, it's, it's what I call a call to action. And we need them to, to start making decisions, leadership decisions, bold decisions that are going to uh, allow us not only to recover, but to prosper and thrive. So to follow that up is going to be a little difficult. <laughs> um, but I guess for sake of adding, the, uh, the thing that was uh, nice actually last night uh, when we followed through and uh, discussed afterwards, um, it was evident that you have a fairly sizable group within the council members that are interested in change. And yeah. um, they made that very clear in their approach. Um, they, they allowed us to basically make recommendations and step back and let them take charge, which was very nice. Um, and the other thing, frankly, is um, the view, the discussion, and pre and post meeting, everybody was of like mind and it was all about community, getting it together, and figuring this out as a team, which was awesome. Well said. It's uh, it's going to be definitely a very long journey. Uh, this economic task force is is just for some many things. And as Ontario is opening up in phases, um, there's one big thing. You know, obviously our sectors of small businesses, manufacturing, IT, uh, the arts, a little bit of everything. Are we expecting any more additional support from our senior levels of government uh, to get some of these small businesses back on their feet as uh, as we get, progress through these? Probably again. I'm going, to, I'm going with a five. Nobody ever goes through a five-year plan, but I'm saying it's going to be a five-year plan. Um, are there any supports on, on the rise that you guys are aware of? Yeah, I, I can take this to start. I know that the, uh, the Canadian emergency uh, wage subsidy, uh, that has actually been the lifeline. Uh, it, was, uh, it was strategically, it really, it, it allowed businesses, especially businesses like mine, uh, to remain open and to have full employment. And the whole intent there was, why have people sitting at home get earning unemployment for earning 55% when you can leave them at work and they can be productive and they can be doing things to, to drive the economy and all, it only costs the government an extra 20%. So um, I, I thought that the, the emergency uh, wage subsidy was the right thing to do and we've seen that they've uh, decided to extend it to the end of April or the end of August rather. Uh, so I, I think that is going to be key. Uh, they, need a, they need to have a sustained uh, subsidy, and I'll, and I'll tell you the reason why. Business did not create this. Governments decided that health was more important than the economy, and that's okay. We're not here to argue that. We're not even here to debate that. I'm very happy with the decisions that were made. However, when we're come, trying to come out of this and recover, the government needs to be there. They need to be that, that financial resource because there's no revenue right now. And until owners, business owners, industry, until they can get some revenue and, and start making some cash flow happen, they need those subsidies coming in. We need to keep people employed. We need to fill our supply chains. We need to make, ensure that our farmers are, are, are producing, that we have raw materials. We need to make sure processing is occurring. We need to make sure that we're filling everything up right up to retail so that, and, and the, the, maybe my last point is that people really do want to spend right now. It's not that they have a lot of money, but they've been cooped up for almost three months and they want to they want to do some they want to do some yard work they want to maybe buy some new furniture and do some things because they've saved up they've been making meals at home for the last 3 months they have some some extra cash so we have to make sure that the retail sector is set up for success we have to understand that 
if it, we have to make sure that their supply chains are enough that that they can not only get the the the, the all the, the products and, and things that that they need to sell but that they can deliver it in a way that's comfortable with people nowadays so is their delivery system adequate do they need to change do they need to change maybe and go to an e-commerce and and maybe maybe create a new portal or, or web page and stuff for their business so there's a lot of work that needs to be done and in working with ecdev at, at, with chatham ken they've been doing a lot uh, of work and and so I think what we need to do now is we need to reach out to those people uh, specifically and 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 say you know where where are the weaknesses where are the gaps and how can we fill them? So I'll take a uh, more municipal approach on this one. The um, the thing that's occurred so far from the municipality has been entirely about a protectionist view. You know, we're making sure everybody's safe um, immediately within their circles. And what's coming next, uh, is feeling that they're going to be looking at maybe participating in, in some of the additional items like uh, staying safe at home, staying safe at, at the job uh, or at work, I should say, you know, things like PPE, maybe participating in some of that. Um, but the other major thing is, so one of the last asks we had was around the $2 million portion. And uh, that specific piece wasn't really earmarked as a specific number as much as a number just to start with. And so the notion of senior lending or senior, senior input from, um, from different layers um, seems to be looking and showing that there'll probably be an amount. Is it more than two? Is it likely more than two? So the nice thing about it is that it actually starts putting an earmark on, okay, well, if it's two, if it's 10, if it's 15, whatever the number is, it'll be helpful. So at the very least right now, we're looking at it from inside to see how we can promote the notion of taking that savings that we may create through some service differences or otherwise on the two million, or maybe we'll do that plus get extras from the government and be able to spend more on kickstarting the economy. But either way, um, our task was to try to promote the notion of the kickstart and the recovery. And right now it looks as if the municipality is both leaning on the, the, lend, the senior uh, lending, but also from internally trying to figure this out. And, uh, it's been it's been a pretty fruitful discussion so far. Yeah, we have a lot of fronts that are we're battling COVID, uh, Erie Shore Drive, and you know this is all kind of banding together and how we are, are going to make a better municipality and a better community to. Uh, and we band in everything we do as a community, so it's, it's great that this is kind of you guys are leading the charge with a great set of uh, chairs. Uh, I have to ask uh, before the report came. There's got to be some great good news stories coming from this. Let's talk about some of your favorites uh, before you unleash the economic task force to all of Chatham Ken. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess I'll start. Um, I've, I've been part of some just absolutely amazing stories. Uh, I, I know that um, there's uh, two gentlemen uh, that they, they made uh, gourmet dinners chicken dinners for 600 residents in the Blenheim and Thamesville area, or Blenheim and Ridgetown, uh, for 600 of the workers and in, in residents. And I just thought that that was absolutely amazing. That was um, uh, Mike, Mike Brown and Mike Gench. And uh, that was just absolutely amazing. And then I know that uh, there's been another story where uh, someone turned their dance studio into a makeshift uh, a makeshift place for for homeless uh, during the COVID time, so that they could house them and, and not be out home, uh, not be out out in the out in the elements at that time. Uh, so I, th I thought that that was absolutely amazing. Uh, May sixteenth, I don't know that we'll ever forget that in our lifetime. Uh, I think I, I spoke to Andrew Teal yesterday, and um, it's just absolutely phenomenal to think that it's it's probably right now uh, a non-registered world record, and so we'll have to we'll have to see if uh, if that turns into one. Uh, it just shows the incredible generosity in uh, in CK, and uh, you know just the the way the, it, the the interaction the last six weeks being on this this uh, business council. Uh, just speaking to people and just hearing people who have been devastated, who have pretty much lost everything, to hear their spirit and to hear the confidence in them that, listen, we are all part of this 
and we're part of CK and we're going to rebuild this. Whatever, whatever we know that we're, we start at, we rebuild it from there. And that's been inspiring. Uh, I, I know that Rocky and I, that's part of our job. We, we need to lead this and we need to show great leadership. But when you have other people doing that same inspiration, it really builds the confidence and it really sets a nice uh, path uh, towards a common goal. So I, I think it's, uh, it's been pretty phenomenal. Rocky, what are you seeing? <laughs> you keep loading me up here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I was going to bring it to, frankly, back to the last five, six weeks or so. The, uh, the thing that's uh, kind of struck me the most over the last period uh, from, from discussions uh, in, or in mid-March to now, it didn't matter whether it was Mayor Caniff, it didn't matter if it was uh, Don Schroffer or uh, John or Karen, all, the municipality, whether they paid or our or, or fellow uh, task force members who were, who were giving their time, no one at any point really went out of their way to do the poor me thing. Everybody at any point, at every point, went out of their way to say, how can I help my fellow CK participant, person, community member, whatever it was. And uh, like we had almost no issues of any kind for five, six weeks straight, multiple sectors, multiple different layers of, of, of humanity. And everyone was speaking the same language. It was a little freaky actually, because people talked about how quickly this came together. It was easy. We just said, hey, what about this? And everybody just went off, boom. And they, they went off and tackled it and then came right back with answers. And, and it just, everything was snappy. We didn't have to try to argue over things. We all knew this had to be something major and it had to be meaningful. And you know what? That task force probably for the last five, six weeks has been one of the major items that I'm going to remember for a very long time. Gentlemen, it's, uh, you're wearing some very large hats and leading the charge. It's going to be some amazing, amazing coming our way. Um, we can't thank all the hard work that you've done so far. Is there anything else that you would like to add? We're all looking forward to what's coming up You know, as you re release more information. Is there anything else that you guys would like to add as we wrap up? You know what? On this one, and you can finish this way. Uh, yeah, You're the speaker of the two of us, so I'll do that way. <laughs> As far as, uh, as as far as the last item, um, group was intended as a deal with things now and then a sustained effort after after this. And um, I'm actually looking forward to what the business advisory group will bring. But the beautiful thing about it all right now that I, I see developing is this is not just a 2020 thing, probably. It's probably going to be a future item for everybody to use and to uh, to help adapt, or like really, and um, and I'm actually looking forward to that. And uh, that's about as good as it gets, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I would echo that. I, I think that uh, the one thing that we've seen uh, over the last six weeks is that uh, administration and uh, and and really all of the municipality um, have really appreciated a uh, different perspective. Uh, let's face it, business people, uh, they're solution-based and they're usually always on a timeline and a deadline and they get things done. So uh, we're not saying it's always perfect. Um, there's a lot of mistakes, uh, but being nimble and being able to uh, have, uh, you know, some, some alternative strategies and be able to implement those quickly. Uh, that's what business people do and they move on. Uh, and, and so that's really uh, the, the flavor and the tone that, uh, that we're, we're wanting to the uh, council and, and uh, the municipality to take as a whole. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And like we said earlier, we have a tremendous amount of assets that are sitting here in CK. We need to be able to access and, and, and really just take the assets that we have and build from them. And when we can do that, and when we're all reaching towards a common goal, uh, I think we can get there. And I think we can get there sooner than later, uh, but it's gonna take a mind shift 
and uh, we're we're all going to have. Uh, there's going to be some, you know. There, <laughs> we'll 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 go back to. Um, it's all about CK, and we are CK. That was something that came up in our report, and it's something that has been said right across the municipality as we talk to people. We are CK, and so we need to be centrally focused and worry about CK as a whole, and not be fragmented. Because as soon as we be, as soon as we fragment our thoughts, so do all of our. Uh, investments and when you invest that way uh, you can't get anything done properly and so centralizing things and in, in, in really optimizing your your investment dollars to get the biggest return on investment in, in attracting more people that's what we're looking to do and that's why a business advisory group is is working with the municipality because it needs to be a business mindset so we're very excited about that and the people that that we're bringing to the table are very credible people and have been for many many years in this community so uh, they know what they're talking about, and we're very, very proud to be part of this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been an exciting process, and we have a lot more work to do. So it's, uh, it's not time to uh, open the bottle of champagne yet. No, no, it's uh, this dim light has just got a little bit brighter with all the hard work that you guys have done. And uh, as CK, we will band together like we do in many projects, and uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, you and your team do. And thank you very much for your time, guys. And, again, stay safe. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate having you. Thank you.